Today I'm talking about my top five galaxies to image this galaxy season, as well as a bonus five galaxies that didn't make it into the top five, which I will explain more about at the end. There's something for all focal lengths here, whether that be getting multiple galaxies in the same field of view with a small modest setup, or getting really up close and personal to one galaxy with a much bigger telescope. There's something for everybody in this list. And you can see which options will work best for you and your specific equipment using free software such as Stellarium. I'm going to run through this list quite quickly to not make the video too long but if you want more information then I will be putting up a post on my website which I will post a link to in the description below this video once I have finished doing it. If we haven't met before hi my name is Nick and let's jump right into the list starting with number one which is the Leo triplet. The Leo triplet obviously sits in the constellation of Leo and the great thing about this particular target is that with most scopes you're gonna get all three galaxies in the same field of view and even with a wide field setup, you'll still be able to pull out quite a lot of detail in the three galaxies. The Leo triplet consists of M65, M66 and NGC 3628, which is also known as the Hamburger Galaxy, which is by far my all-time favourite name for a galaxy. As I've said, most gear will be able to get all three galaxies in the same field of view, but if you've got a big scope, then you may only be able to get one or two of the galaxies in that field of view, and if you want to get all three, then you may have to create a mosaic to be able to achieve uh, the sort of triplet look that most people will be able to get in one field of view. It's impossible for me to say which scope and which camera would get in one field of view and which would only get one galaxy in the field of view because if you've got a really uh, big telescope with a long focal length but then you've got a full frame sensor you might still be able to get all three in the field of view but then if you have a smaller telescope with a crop sensor like the 533 that i use on my scope then even with a slightly smaller scope because of that crop factor you may find that you can still only get one or two galaxies in the field of view so it would be impossible for me to say but i really recommend going into stellarium and putting in your details so that you can check out which specific objects will fit within your field of view based on the equipment that you've got okay number two is bodes and cigar galaxies also known as m81 and M82 and I'm really spoiling you here because we're only on number two and we're already up to five galaxies which is great. M81 and M82 sit in the constellation of Ursa Major and again most setups will be able to get both of the galaxies within the same field of view but if you've got a bigger scope then you'll only be able to get one but that will mean that you will be able to pull out some really nice detail of each of those galaxies and you'll be able to create a stunning image. Here's an image that I was able to take of the galaxies recently using the setup that you can see behind me, the Skywatcher Evo Star 72 ED and ZWO 533 MC Pro. Not the best image you'll ever see because transparency on the night was absolutely terrible but you can see how it would fit into one field of view and actually with more integration time you'll be able to pull out a lot of detail and create a really good image. Okay, number three on the list is the Pinwheel Galaxy M101, which also sits in the constellation of Ursa Major, and it is the only single galaxy in this list of top five galaxies. All of the others in this list have multiple galaxies in one field of view for most people. And some of you out there might be thinking that you need a much longer focal length than perhaps my imaging equipment to be able to take a decent image of the Pinwheel Galaxy, but I'm gonna challenge that slightly because I use this telescope and the DSLR, which actually gives me a wider field of view than the 533. And I was able to pull out, an, it's an okay image, all right? It's one of the first astrophotography images that I ever took. It's not quite in focus, but I just wanted to show you that had this been in focus and had I had more integration time, then I'd have been able to pull out a really good image. But you can see how it fits into the field of view and how processing that image without any filter, with only two minute exposures, and I think it was about three hours of total integration time, then I've been able to pull out an okay image. If it was in focus, it would obviously be a lot better. So don't let your imaging equipment be the thing that holds you back from trying something out. Give something a go. The worst thing that will happen is that you'll have wasted a night of imaging, and that's it. Okay, number four on the list is the Whirlpool Galaxy M51, which sits in the constellation Canes Venatasi, and I really struggle to pronounce that every single time. And also show some love to the lesser known NGC 5195, which is a dwarf galaxy that's interacting with the Whirlpool Galaxy that you can see at the bottom of this image here. And it really adds to the Whirlpool Galaxy and, cre and can create a really great image. And again, I took this image with a three inch refractor 
Canon DSLR, no filter, no auto guiding, two minute exposures. And I think I've pulled out a, a reasonable image. The camera that I used was modified, even though it didn't need to be, which is why the color is slightly off. So I sort of need to do better with my post-processing there to change the colors back to something more natural. But you can see that while it might be small in the field of view, I've still been able to pull out quite a bit of detail in the galaxy itself. And last, but by no means least, this list is not in any specific order. In fact, this one happens to be my favorite of the lot that we've spoken about so far, and that is Macarium's chain, which is part of the Virgo supercluster. This target is great for all focal lengths, and actually probably the wider the better for this one, because you'll be able to fit more galaxies into one field of view the wider your focal length is. It's a real favorite of mine during galaxy season, purely because of the amount of galaxies that you can get into one field of view. It's an absolutely amazing target to image. If you haven't tried it before, I really recommend it. It doesn't matter what kit you're using, whether you're using a 50 millimeter lens all the way up to a massive telescope, you will be able to pull out a great amount of detail. I've got five more galaxies to list really quickly at the end here. And the reason that I didn't call this video the top 10 galaxies to image this galaxy season is because these ones actually really do require a longer focal length to be able to get some really nice detail. By all means, please do still give it a try, but they'll be so small in the field of view that you might be disappointed with the end result. The first one is M106, which is a galaxy I tried to image recently. Again, transparency was terrible on the night. If you watched my previous video, you'll have seen that image that I shared, which was just not great at all, but I had a go anyway. And it's a beautiful target with the right setup, but it's just not quite right for my setup. Then we've got the Sunflower Galaxy M63, which I think is probably my favorite galaxy to look at that other people have imaged. I, it's just way too small to fit in my field of view, but I love it when other people image it and share it on social media because I think it's just a really stunning object to look at. I think the shape of it is just absolutely beautiful. Then we've got the Whale Galaxy NGC 4631, which does just look like a whale, which is <laughs> hilarious. Then we've got the Needle Galaxy NGC 4565. Name tells you everything you need to know about it there. A really great target for those with the correct focal length. And lastly, we've got the Sombrero Galaxy, a space hat. M104. This target is amazing and I just love the glow from the center of the galaxy from that side on view when other people share what they've taken on social media. Again, too small for my setup, might be too small for your setup, but with the right setup, again, probably one of my favorites of galaxy season. Now, if you're a beginner in this hobby and are wanting to look at five deep sky objects that are really easy to image, no matter what equipment you're using, whether you're using no tracker, a star tracker, or a bigger mount such as an HEQ5, then go ahead and click into this video right here where I talk about my top five deep sky targets for beginners. My name is Nick. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.